This here is an eastern garter snake, sometimes also known as the common garter snake, as they're one of the most widespread and common of the garter snakes. The genus Thamnophis in general are one of the most widespread reptiles in North America, as well as some of the most misunderstood. Today I'd like to talk to you about why garter snakes are cooler than you think, and why they're some of the most interesting snakes on the planet. Let's start with the name, the garter snake. Many people are often confused as they usually know these animals as garden snakes or gardener snakes. They are known by this as they are commonly found in gardens, although this is not their true name. They are called garter snakes because of the dorsal stripes that many of these species exhibit. These stripes can resemble the garters people used to use and still use today, although not quite as common, to hold up their socks. Now, animals also have a more specific scientific name, and in the case of garter snakes, this name is Thamnophis. Now, like I said, garter snakes can be found throughout most of North America, from the subarctic plains of Canada all the way down to the southern states in Central America. The eastern garter snake, Thamnophis sertalis sertalis, as shown here, is the state reptile of Massachusetts, but has a distribution from as far north as southern Ontario and Quebec, down to the Gulf of Mexico. These snakes have a wide variety of habitats as their varied diet and ability to adapt to different environments and climates allows them to survive and thrive in such a large range. Habitats include grasslands and tall grass prairies, forests and woodlands, swamps and bogs, even your own backyard. Garter snakes are almost, if not always, found with some area of water close by, such as streams, lakes, rivers, ponds, or wetlands. Being adapted to eat amphibians as well as semi-aquatic, they are never usually far from these bodies of water. As previously stated, garter snakes have a wide variety of prey items in their diet. Garter snakes, like all snakes, are carnivores and have been observed consuming thousands of different animals as prey. Every species and subspecies of garter snake has a preferred source of food, and many of them are specialized to eat something specifically. These food sources include, but are certainly not limited to, frogs, toads, worms, slugs, fish, mice and rats, salamanders, newts, birds, and in some species, even other snakes can occasionally be put on the menu, although for Thamnophis, this is generally very, very rare. Now, garter snakes do not kill their prey using constriction like most other snakes do. And despite what you may have believed previously, they actually use venom. Garter snakes are an overpowering, mildly venomous, rear-fanged colubrid, which basically means that these animals use their mild neurotoxic venom as well as literally overpowering or eating their prey while it is still alive instead of waiting for it to die like a constrictor would. Garter snakes have fixed fangs in the rear portion of their mouth that help to aid venom into wounds as they chew. Unlike pit vipers or cobras, these snakes cannot inject venom, so they must chew in order to almost massage the venom into an open wound. This venom usually has very little effect on us, but allergic reactions are known to occur. More severe bites to humans usually include swelling, redness and rashes. In captivity, I find garter snakes to be great eaters of virtually anything. Although some, especially wild caught individuals, can be picky when it comes to trying new things. Garter snakes are well known for their large and numbersome breeding balls. When females start ovulation, they release a pheromone that drives male snakes absolutely bonkers. It is not uncommon to see multiple males trying to breed one female. Sometimes this results in breeding balls of dozens or even hundreds of snakes at a time. The strongest males successfully breed and better genetics are passed on over the generations. The snake dens over in Manitoba are the best place in the planet to see this phenomena of hundreds of snakes piled together. Anacondas are also known to exhibit this behavior. In fact, I find Thamnophis share many similarities with anacondas. The female garter snake will give birth to live young 
anywhere from only a couple up to over a hundred babies at a single birth. All these little garter snakes are born very fragile but possess the ability to swim, hunt, find food and shelter all on their own. Garter snakes and similar snakes also make fantastic pets. They are among one of the most captivating and interesting snakes and also one of the most underappreciated. Good for both advanced as well as beginner keepers, their care rivals ball pythons, corn snakes, and other common beginner snakes in terms of ease of care. Being diurnal, naturally curious, and inquisitive, and a species that can safely be housed with other garter snakes and even similar snakes such as water snakes, these animals make great displays alone and in groups. Some more advanced keepers even keep multiple species of garters together, as well as, like I mentioned before, other species of snakes like water snakes. They thrive in planted terrariums with lots of space and do not do well in small cramped tubs with no visual or other stimulation. Whether you are looking to get your first snake or your 100th snake, garter snakes are an amazing way to go. There are thousands and thousands of other cool facts about garter snakes, such as they're one of the only snakes on the planet that can be both venomous and poisonous. I just want to take a second to thank you all for watching. I've wanted to create a video like this for a long time and I'm glad I decided to reach out of my comfort zone to do so. I had a blast doing it. All the snakes in this video are captive bred and my own animals. And if you have any questions or are curious about a specific species shown, feel free to reach out or comment down below. Thanks again.